Hey, horror shorties. This sponsor is brought to you by the Netflix of Horror. Shudder is a streaming service with the best selection of horror movies, horror series, thrillers, and more that you won't find anywhere else. A Shudder subscription gives you access to critically acclaimed films, cult classics, and uncut commercial-free shows on all of your favorite devices. Stream from your PC, iPhone, Android, Roku, Fire Stick, you name it. With our code Horror Shorts, you can try Shudder for 30 days free. Shudder just finished its halfway to Halloween month in April, which was the biggest month for original titles such as Creepshow and exclusive movies like The Power or The Reckoning. Creepshow is a popular title that brings a creepy comic book to life. It is based off the 1982 version and has received great reviews all around. I've always loved horror series and I've been waiting for a service like this. Shudder is literally my go-to for all horror. With new edge-of-your-seat thrillers and shocking new movies added every week, you will always have something scary to watch. My favorite part about Shudder would have to be their selection of classic horror movies. Nostalgic films such as The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Amityville Horror, Insidious, and many more are readily available with just a few clicks. You can stream all of this for a small payment of $5.99 a month or one payment of $56.99 a year. Get started streaming the best horror, thriller, and supernatural content. Shudder's expertly curated collection includes must-see titles like Color Out of Space, Host, The Mortuary Collections, Plus, all the best horror documentaries and the hit Creepshow TV series from executive producer Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead. Try Shudder for 30 days free with our promo code HORRORSHORTS so you can enjoy your favorite titles worry-free for an entire month. Stream today with Shudder. I was a 21-year-old male living in the outskirts of the city. I personally enjoyed living in a rural area, as I found it more peaceful than living in the city, where it was often congested with hordes of pedestrians roaming the streets. The area where I resided was made up of crop fields and farmland, not the commonly seen infrastructure I was used to seeing in the city. It was nothing but just farm animals and broad landscapes glistening within the horizon. I usually was in the city for the latter part of my day, as I was a full-time Uber driver that worked close to 12 hours a day. I personally didn't like the job a whole lot, but unfortunately I didn't have much of a choice, as I needed to help my parents pay off their mortgage that was lingering over their shoulders for the last decade or so. I wasn't much of a people person, so I would always drive in silence or casually have the radio playing in the background just to ease the subtle awkwardness of a complete stranger sitting in the passenger side next to me. I remember on this one particular night, I was heading home from a long shift of driving a bunch of drunk college students around the city, considering it was the weekend. The time was around 2 or 3 in the morning when I was driving through the back ends of the countryside, as it was usually the quickest route to get home. It was generally recommended not to take this direction during these times as there wasn't many street lights around, just tall crop fields and one gloomy road ahead. What the hell was that? I remember getting out of my car and slowly approaching the front bumper just to see what the hell collided with my vehicle. <gasps> I can recall seeing a deer's body laying lifelessly on the dirt road. It was almost as if the sudden impact from my car had completely obliterated the deer's physical frame into a bloody matter of guts and organs scattered all over the ground. The deer was surprisingly still alive, as I could hear it wheezing in agony while its legs began twitching from the initial shock of the collision. 
I legitimately felt sick to my stomach and immediately went inside my car. I didn't know if calling 911 would be the wisest decision, considering I was young and naive. I was honestly convinced that there was a possibility that I could go to jail. That's when I ultimately decided to take matters into my own hands as I grabbed a pair of latex gloves from the glove compartment of my car. I put them on and held the deer by its legs while manually dragging the dead carcass off to the side of the road. I began hearing police sirens coming from a distance. That's when the paranoia began settling inside my head as I thought someone from afar had called the cops on me. I then went inside my vehicle and began to drive off not caring if my car had further trampled whatever life was remaining within that deer. It's just a deer. It's just a deer. Don't worry, it's just a deer. It's definitely not a hit and run. I, I just made an honest, I just made an honest mistake. How the hell could it be my fault? If there's no goddamn street lights. I eventually make it home and pulled into my driveway as I decided to clean the remaining blood residue lingering on the hood of my car. I didn't want to raise any suspicion from any onlooking neighbors, so I decided to park my car inside my garage so I could hose my car without the feeling of being watched. After several minutes of intense cleaning, I decided to quietly approach my washroom without waking up my parents. I began to fill my bathtub up with warm water as the idea of soaking for an hour or two wouldn't hurt my chances of calming my nerves down. The next couple shifts, I was able to get back on the horse as I conducted business as usual. I honestly swept the entire deer occurrence under the rug as I needed to get on with my life and not latch on to a simple mistake that inevitably would have happened. I decided to take an entirely alternate route and not the dark back roads when heading home. I couldn't run the risk of hitting another deer, as the guilt from the first deer still tears me to shreds internally. I remember this one night. I worked the usual graveyard hours when I picked up this one girl near a busy location in the city. She surprisingly lived in the direction of where I resided, so I figured dropping her off was a bargain one couldn't refuse. As we made our way home, I remember looking at my rearview mirror and seeing a rotting deer's head carcass laying on the back seat of my car. That's when I slammed my foot on the gas pedal and began jetting through the freeway as the Uber customer yelled. What the hell are you doing? Sir, can you please pull over? I want to get out. Stop the car! Stop the car! Stop it! Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Let me out of your car, you freak! That's when I abruptly swerved my car in the direction of the back roads where I had initially killed the deer. I gradually accelerated my vehicle through the field of crops and trees while simultaneously contemplating if I was hallucinating or if my brain was playing sadistic tricks on me. I then casually drew my attention towards the passenger and I could visibly see the woman's head turn into a deer's. It's just a deer. It's just a deer. Don't worry. It's just a deer. It's definitely not a hit and run. I... I just made an honest... I just made an honest mistake. This is a story that happened a couple of years ago when I was 19 years old. I had a friend named Matt who was celebrating his birthday at a nightclub downtown. It was pretty exciting as he was turning 19 himself, which was the legal drinking age from where I resided. I remember wisely taking an Uber as opposed to driving down there myself, just in case I wanted to get hammered. Turning legal age where I was from always gave a reason to go over the top with the drinking, so taking an Uber was completely justifiable. 
When I eventually got inside the club, I could recall dancing with multiple females while hammering down countless drinks. Again, it was my friend Matt's birthday, so we usually hosted these extravagant events by getting a booth along with bottle service. Hey, dude, you having a good time? Yes, sir. I bet you're checking out that blonde at the bar, huh? Come on, man, why don't you mind your own beeswax, birthday boy? <laughs> you like them thick, don't you? Oh, uh, you know what else is thick? What? <sighs> My vomit. <coughs> I remember not feeling as intoxicated after puking in the bathroom stall, but that didn't stop me from throwing in the towel and calling it a night. I can recall heading out of the club and calling an Uber, as I knew my chances of picking up a female was slim to none, considering I had regurgitated ramen breath. I ultimately purchased an Uber pool, which was when multiple riders heading in the same direction as you could also share a ride. I particularly didn't like sharing rides with strangers, but seeing as how cheap the Uber pool was in comparison to the regular Uber, I thought I'd give it a try. I wasn't exactly the wealthiest guy at the time. Just an average college student, who was broke and lived off eating noodle packs to help make ends meet. About ten minutes later, my Uber finally arrived curbside near the club. As I approached the Uber, I nonchalantly hopped in the back of the vehicle, as I could see the front passenger seat being occupied by another male. I remember seeing the male passed out drunk, as I assumed he had consumed a large amount of alcohol, considering we were in the club district of the city. As the Uber driver begins to drive towards our destinations, I kindly introduce myself by saying, Hey there. Long night, ain't it? Yep, I'm kinda used to it. What's wrong with him? He's just drunk as a skunk. Just like the majority of you kids I pick up. <laughs> yeah, well, you only live once, you know. The driver acknowledges my statement by nodding his head as he proceeds to carry on with the ride ahead. I remember briefly being in and out of consciousness, as I knew the ride was going to approximately take a little longer than usual due to the ride being an Uber pool. I kindly request the Uber driver to play some music in his car by saying, Excuse me, sir, do you have an aux cord I can use to play my music? I thought you said you only live once, no? Uh, yeah. Well, enjoy your life while you're still here, kid. I confusingly respond with, what do you mean? Don't you just enjoy looking at nature? I then looked outside and realized that he was taking us through a secluded rural area where it was nothing but crop fields and land. That's when my sobering reality set in, as I realized he had completely driven off route from the requested destination. Uh, sir, where are we going? Can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Why did you get inside my car? Because you're my Uber driver? And why did you assume that I'm your Uber driver? Because you, uh, you picked me up? That's when I checked the Uber app and noticed something so disturbing that still raises the hairs on the back of my neck just thinking about it. The profile picture of the driver was the same man passed out on the passenger seat. As I casually glanced at the passenger, I could see a trickle of blood dripping down from his mouth. That's when the driver looked at me through the rearview mirror and said, I'm not an Uber driver, kid. Then who the hell are you? You're gonna wish you never lived from the torture I'm gonna put you through. <laughs> That's when I opened the door and immediately jumped out onto the side of the dirt road as the man abruptly stopped the vehicle. I knew I had fractured my rib cage, but through sheer adrenaline, I had picked myself up and ran deep into the middle of a nearby cornfield. I remember running for about five minutes or so, until I was a good couple yards away from the vehicle. That's when I heard the man yelling from afar, saying, Come back, kid! I'm not gonna hurt you! It was just a joke! I remained silent and crouched down the entire time as I dialed 911 on my cell phone. I remember whispering my location to the operator while simultaneously using the Google Map feature. What was 15 minutes felt like 15 hours, as I saw several police units show up at the disclosed location. 
I ultimately ended up filing a police report and getting dropped off at my house from one of the officers. As far as the so-called Uber driver, he was unfortunately not found, as the vehicle was located near a forest preserve about a mile away from where the cornfield was. The man in the passenger seat was in fact the real Uber driver, who was unfortunately pronounced dead at the scene. I still don't know what the man planned to do with me that night. All I can speculate is that the man was severely ill in the head and needs to get some sort of professional help. I now don't drink, nor do I take any form of public transportation when I go out, as the fear of encountering that man still triggers me to this day. This is a story that happened a few years ago when I was working as a Lyft driver. I worked countless hours picking up random clients and bringing them to their respective destinations. I quite frankly enjoyed my job, as I got to meet new people every week, and sometimes got to engage in conversation about their personal life and whatnot. I was a pretty social guy, so this was a common thing. Well, for the most part anyway. The job wasn't always sunshine and glam, as some people just brushed me off and strictly wanted to be driven without any small talk. I remember this one Saturday night. I had parked my car close to the club district, as it was the hot spot for Lyft drivers trying to get the most amount of clients possible. Most individuals around this side of town were usually intoxicated and were just fetching for a ride home. I remember driving about several different individuals throughout the night and got tipped pretty decent each time. The time was roughly 1 a.m. when I decided to park my car curbside near the district once more and hopefully drive one last client home before calling it a night. That's when a girl abruptly appears face first on my driver's side window while cupping her hands around her eyes as if she was trying to look at me or something inside my car. To be honest, I was a little taken aback as my car didn't have its windows tinted, so seeing her nosily peep inside my car was rather bizarre to say the least. Um, ma'am, can I help you? She just stared at me, and then said in a frantic voice, Please drive me. Ma'am, is everything okay? Please just take me home. I'm begging you. Let me inside your car, sir. The woman relentlessly pleaded for me to take her home, as the tone in her voice gave off an impression that sounded wretched and distressful. Ma'am, I can't take any clients unless you requested a ride through the lift app. I need a ride now! Please open the door! I'm begging you! Okay, okay, I'll drive you. That's when the lady hops in the passenger seat and directs me to drive on the freeway. I knew driving her would be a huge risk, as it went against Lyft's policies, and also my moral values of picking up random strangers without the security of the company's app. I couldn't help but draw my attention towards the lady. It was honestly difficult driving, as I couldn't help but glance over at her direction through my peripherals. Ma'am, is everything okay? Do you need me to call the cops at all? No, 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 She just kept repeating that word while hyperventilating, like she was borderline about to experience an anxiety attack. Ma'am, you're really scaring me. Are you sh sure everything is alright? Just get off at this exit and keep driving. Ma'am, where are you taking me? The road ahead is just nothing but forest preserve according to my GPS. Do you live outside of town or something? And how are you going to pay? I already said I was going to withdraw money from an ATM, so just shut up and keep driving, okay? I have honestly never felt so much fear in my entire life than this particular moment. I was convinced that the woman had to be mentally ill or delusional to some degree, with the weird behavior and antics. There was about a five minute awkward moment of silence as I kept driving through the one way streets surrounded with hordes of trees and forests. Hey, can you pull over here? I just have to pee really, really bad. I then slowed the vehicle down and eventually made a stop to the side of the road as a woman gets out and begins to sprint towards the forest to do her business. That's when I began to play the waiting game while casually texting my fiancé regarding the situation. As I was looking at my cell phone, I could see my car begin to illuminate with light, shining from the back of my car. A car had just pulled up and oddly parked right next to the rear end of my vehicle. 
I then saw a hooded man get out of the passenger side and sprint towards the forest as I began to scream. Hey! Hey! What the hell are you doing? That's when I got startled by another man who abruptly slammed his hand against the driver's side window of where I was sitting at. He then said, Where is she? Where is she, you little rat? I don't know what you're talking about, dude. I'm just a Lyft driver. I saw her get inside your vehicle. That's when I saw the hooded man drag the woman from out of the forest while covering her mouth with one of his hands. I could visibly see and hear her muffled cries for help while forcibly getting dragged into the back seat of their vehicle. The man by my window then sprints to the vehicle and immediately drives off into the distance. I began to dial 911 while attempting to chase the vehicle, but unfortunately couldn't keep up as they aggressively sped away. I then pulled over to the nearest exit and waited for the police to show up. About 15 to 20 minutes later, the cops showed up and I began to file a police report. When I was asked about any information regarding the vehicle, I almost wanted to rip all my hair out, as I failed to get the simplest information, which was getting the man's driver's license. I still think about that incident every time I'm on the road now. All I can hope for is that that woman ends up returning home safely, and that those guys end up getting caught so that justice could be served. I ended up filing a report to Lyft, and even went as far as to set up a dash cam in my vehicle, just in case I get involved in any disturbing situations in the future. I just hope that I never encounter another stranger like that again.